Let's begin with Tokyo Mirage Sessions. <laughs> Sharp FE. Um, yeah, the, a lot of people have had trouble pronouncing that. I wonder why. Um, but uh, yeah, what can I say about this game? It is a Persona style dungeon crawl RPG set in a, um, well, idol setting, I don't know, something like that. It, well, in uh, modern Tokyo and um, the uh, main protagonists are idols. I, I don't really understand what that is about, but um, apparently they're singing and dancing and uh, photography and uh, shaking people's hands involved. I don't know. Um, but uh, I... Yeah, I, I really can't remember um, why I uh, bought the game. I mean, uh, first off, I thought, hmm, Shin Mikami Tensei. I had just uh, started playing a Digital Devil Saga at the time, I think. And I, I kind of liked that. And then I kind of got into uh, Fire Emblem, so... Well... Give me that. And, um, well, then of course... Um, <laughs> Uh, things happen during development, and um, yeah, without going into detail, all I'm gonna say is that some people really had problem accepting that uh, games being developed, yeah, they are kind of subject to change, and uh, yeah, uh, okay, fair, fair enough, some changes uh, were more, um, well, uh, there was well the changes were what they were I, I I don't think I should spend time going into any detail here uh, but the point is um, the game changed quite a bit from its Japanese release to its Western release uh, the important thing to take away there is that this is a localization not a censorship people tend to get the two mixed up for some interesting reason um, so in uh, Japan they apparently are you know more accepting t towards this whole sexuality in the public space than we are in uh, Western society uh, Western societies uh, well I, I think uh, the United States is a bit, bit weird <laughs> in that regard, and I guess that's where most of the uh, criticism of censorship and all, all, all that thing came from, anyway. I, I don't know. Yeah. There was controversy. There, there was a controversy. And it's a bit of a clusterfuck. But all that aside, the game is really solid. The animations are good the attack animations they are <laughs> well nothing if not spectacular you can't can't fault them for that you really can't um let's see what else yeah it, it's a very colorful game a colorful game um now the story is really silly the music is, um, uh, well, it's exactly what you'd expect from just looking at the <laughs> uh, promotional material. It's um, not my favorite aspect of the game. Let's leave it at that. Uh, other people, I'm sure, would appreciate it more than I do. Um, so, what pulls me into this game? Uh, it is really the gameplay. It's um, it's not as uh, taxing on the um, patience as um, I mean, it, yeah, it it doesn't demand as much patience as uh, the Shin Megami Tensei games do. It's uh, although it, it does really build on the whole uh, press turn system. Sort of. 
I mean, you can't tell that it is related to that, but it has more in common with the Persona uh, combat system, really. Or um, maybe uh, I should say Persona 4 Golden. I, th I think they added a few things uh, to that version. I, I never played that, but I did play Persona 4, um, the original release for the PlayStation 2. Um, yeah, so, yeah. If you've played those games, um, you know, the Tokyo Mirage Sessions is not going to disappoint from, the, from a gameplay aspect. Uh, now, the sessions, though, uh, I, I should really bring those out. They, they are the biggest departure from the typical uh, Shin Megami Tensei and Persona uh, combat system. What they are is basically a bunch of sessions. And during the course of the game, like in... Um, uh, Digital Devil Saga 1, I think. I, I think that's the uh, closest uh, analogy. Um, mm, screen saver. No screen saver, please. Um, you uh, learn skills, right? You get spells, uh, passive skills, and you get session skills. What you need to do is uh, basically have... Uh, well, you, you build a sort of attribute chain. If one uh, character attacks with uh, one type of attack, uh, the next character in line would need to have uh, a session skill that uh, triggers when an attack, well, or one or skill using a certain attribute is used before that. Then they use uh, some other attack. It could be really any, any attack at all. And then the next character in line after that will have to have a session skill built on top of the uh, attribute that the uh, character, well, that the second character used in uh, their attack. Um, and well, it it's uh, it, it, there's more craziness going on there, but uh, you can build up chains. Um, we have a full party ranging from anything between 8 and 15 attacks. And uh, they take a lot of time. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it It's a bizarre game. It's uh, kind of like... Um, kind of like a, a, a Bayonetta geared to the younger audience. Like... 13, 14, 15-ish, um, who like to, you know, dress all proper, like, and clean their teeth every day, um, <laughs> uh, and are into uh, dungeon crawling. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just brought up Bayonetta for the absurdity, really. Uh, no other reason, I swear. <laughs> um... Yeah, is there anything else to say about the game? Um, no, not really. Um, uh, the uh, first playthrough uh, typically takes around 100 hours. Um, while I, you know, didn't enjoy every aspect of it, I can't say that I was ever bored, really. Uh, the gameplay is the uh, most solid aspect of this game, and it is good. You cannot fault the game for having a bad gameplay. If the rest of it is up your alley, that's a different matter altogether. I kind of didn't play that a few other things of the, of the game are up my alley. But hey, I enjoy playing the game. So, um, you know, if you don't have a Wii U, you know, this is not the game that is going to convince you to buy a Wii U. But um, if you do have a Wii U and you haven't played the game and you are looking for a JRPG to spend some time on. That's a solid title, with uh, you know good uh, production values and all that good stuff, um, and a lot of J-pop. Take that for what it is. <laughs> all right, moving on. <laughs> 